Welcome to the tutorial on Smart Clustering. Smart Cluster is an exciting technology that was released in version 1.1.2 uh, and has seen some improvements in 1.2.0 as most functions have. And we are using 1.2.0 to uh, demonstrate Smart Cluster today. And we'll be running the tutorial through the image processor, so let's get started. We have here an example of a segmentation case that will likely benefit from Smart Cluster. Prior to that tool, it would have taken um, a recipe quite a bit longer than what we're going to make today, something like this, that has various selection steps, cleaning steps, and logic and memory steps to subtract one selection from the other, leaving us with the three feature types core, shell, and background at the end. With Smart Cluster, we're able to automatically start grouping pixels into different uh, classes, if you will, based on their intensity, and objectively so, where a clustering alg algorithm runs on the grayscale data to perform the assignments for us, minimizing user input and subjectivity. So the Smart Cluster tool is available under the segmentation menu, under the advanced heading. And if we start, we see that we can set the number of classes. There is an edge clean parameter, uh, which I will discuss in a moment. Different ways to fill the resulting classes and the order in which they are cleaned if you choose to use the edge clean setting. If we simply click into the slider, we'll set three classes, and what has just happened is each pixel has been assigned to one of three classes. Those classes are determined automatically from the grayscale histogram, and the pixels are then assigned to whichever class they uh, are, like, are most likely to belong. What we see here, though, is that we don't have um, a nice continuous dark region on the inside of this core and as such we have a lot of noise resulting from the cluster similarly in the outside perimeter uh, of the shells so what we'll like to do first is set up a median filter something uh, it could be a wiener it could be a non-local means just something that uh, groups and, and, and slightly blurs the intensities within the features of interest. Just something like that will help aggregate a lot of this darker intensity and give a smoother smart cluster result. So now back in the smart cluster if we set three classes again we get this. And what can happen with the smart cluster is that sometimes you need maybe one or even two more classes than you thought you did. And this just comes down to how the algorithm is separating out the histogram. Uh, you'll see in a moment that we don't have to just have one class per layer, which we'll eventually set. We can take multiple classes and group them together and call class sets a different layer. And it sometimes work, works out that having my part try to split it up into four classes allows you to make a more accurate selection uh, of your features of interest. And that's what you're going to see here. If we up the class count to four, we look at a before and after, what I'm looking at is up here in this region. We'd really like our selection to be somewhere in that area. And right now, forcing there to only be three classes gives us that. If we go to four, now we have a much more accurate selection of this core area here. But we, again, we can still take uh, this class and this class and group them together into the same layer. We can see what five looks like. And that, I think, starts to add too much uh, confusion as we move out from the center towards the edge. Edge clean controls the thickness of artifacts that may exist at the interface between two classes. Sometimes with smart cluster, uh, you will see other classes manifest in transitions from a major feature to a background. And 
by setting this edge clean parameter, we can start to clean up small bits of noise that might exist between features. Overall, it's a bit of a smoothing on all classes at once, which can cut down on any work that you might need to do afterwards. It can join up features like this, but uh, you can get around that with feature separation afterwards. Let's just go with a, a one here and uh, I'd say overall this is a pretty effective uh, smart cluster or is a pretty effective uh, simplification of our original intensity image with just a single step. The fill type I will mention is uh, will allow you to choose how to fill in the selected classes. The default is mean, so each class is getting filled with its mean grayscale intensity. But you can also choose to look at the median value, the uh, minimum gray value that was in the class, or sometimes very useful, the class ID itself. So in this case, the background is all ones. The, the, the shell is now twos, the third is threes, and the darkest is fours. And this can be incredibly powerful at allowing you to simply uh, label each feature based on its class number so that subsequent uh, selection steps that we do do not uh, are not affected by any grayscale intensity variation that you might see from one image to the next. In other words, perhaps next time the background is slightly brighter and it's, it's probably within the tolerance of your threshold that you're going to set, but uh, it doesn't matter if it is or, or not if you select the class type because the background will always be ones and the shell will always be twos now for every image going forward that you batch apply this to. So oftentimes I like to choose class as the fill type. And if we hit accept now, now this is the result of the smart cluster. It's a grayscale image just like before, but it is a um, informed grayscale image. And what we can do now is run range threshold steps on this to pull out what class we care about. Or if we care about all of them, we'll run a few steps. So let's set this up as memory image one, just so we can call it a few more times. We'll take a range threshold step here, and we're going to take the, um, well, we can just start with all of them. We can take the background class here. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the brightest class is up here now. The class values got normalized from 0 to 255, so uh, that visualization is, is simplified. So the brightest class here is um, up at 255, uh, and it is the background. So there we've selected the background now. Now we can call memory one, go in here with a range. Let's select the next phase, or next class, which will be our shells. Then we'll call memory one again, and we can select the last two, which will be our core. You may want to run a median filter or, a no, uh, or some other noise reducer on the result of the smart cluster that might help get rid of uh, small artifacts like this if you care about those, if those are inaccurate. So let's try to put a median filter in here now below the smart cluster. Something like that. And now that of course all propagated through to these range thresholds. And we can set each of these as classes now. So we can take the selection on the uh, core, we'll call it core, and we can take this selection and call it shell, and we can take this selection and call it background. And there we have a segmentation with very few steps using the smart find tool or the smart cluster tool rather and again
there was no subjective determination of the threshold levels here. That was all done via the smart clustering uh, algorithm. There might be some additional steps that you'd want to do to uh, remove these small um, features or, or to fill, their, uh, fill in holes in other layers. For example, after the shell is found, we may want to uh, let's start here. Let's take the background. We might want to uh, remove features that are uh, under 50 pixels. And what I'll then do is remove this as the layer and set this as the layer. And then here in the shell, we may want to fill holes that are, I'm sorry, we may want to fill holes that are under 50. And now this would be the new shell layer. We can adjust this now here. This blue is still remaining, so we may want to up this to 100. And then adjust this to be 100. And that is a pretty effective segmentation, in my opinion. So, um, hopefully you find Smart Cluster to be quite valuable. It's got a range of applications. It can even be used for just two-phase segmentation, uh, all the way up to as many feature types as you have. And it has really cut down on the length of some of these more complicated recipes. So let us know if you have any feedback or questions about the tool. Um, it's no problem, as always, to build up a custom recipe for you or adjust recipes that you're working on. Check out our recipe store, which is ever growing at mypart.us slash recipe dash store. And we hope to hear from you. We'll see you in the next one.